Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Lenny Zakem's Funds um, seminar series. This seminar is on leveraging matching grants. And today our guest speaker is Ali Fuller from Level Ground Mixed Martial Arts. Um, so we hope that you'll find this useful and informative, uh, especially if you have had a challenge grant in the past and want to improve upon your success or are currently trying to match a challenge grant um, and create trying to come up with new ways to, to um, accomplish your goals. So with that, I'll pass it on to Allie. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'm super stoked to be here. I'll momentarily share my screen and then we can do intros. Um, so let's see, who am I? I am Allie as like, how do I, how does one do this? Okay, ah, here we go, perfect. Um, just let me know if this is not a suitable view for you guys. Um, so hello people, um, I'm really excited to be here. And um, while I am no, by no means an expert, I can share with you um, what works for us in terms of our challenge grant matching process. This was the first time that we um, received a challenge grant from any organization or any funder. Um, and so it was a really interesting and really fun thing to experiment with and um, you know hopefully we'll have this opportunity again with other with this is our final year in Lenny Zakem fund but um, moving forward I'm really excited to um, leverage opportunities such as challenge grant um, making to get some new donors and to be able to um, really bolster some of our current programs so this was a great learning opportunity for us and I'm excited to share with you what worked for us so I figure today um, we can do some brief intros. Um, I'll introduce you a little bit to Level Ground and just give you a brief overview of our organization as well as some corresponding metrics. I will um, introduce you to the context of our challenge grant opportunity this year, um, some strategies that we used, a breakdown of our match, and then um, if it if we do happen to have anyone who is currently seeking a challenge grant, um, then there's a little bit of an opportunity for you guys to share some of the things that you're thinking about. Otherwise we can um, you know, ask questions of each other or conclude for the day. So we'll feel it out. But I've, I'll unshare my screen for a second. Um, and I would just love for folks to be able to introduce themselves, their organi organ um, organization and just indicate um, whether or not you have had any experience in seeking a challenge grant match. So my, um, there will be a little bit of time um, for a, a bit of a, um, for a few minutes for a breakout room where you can have a little bit more of an opportunity to share um, with the other folks on this call about what you might be considering. And then they could you know, provide, ask you questions, provide a little bit of feedback. So hopefully that, that's helpful for you. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, okay, awesome. Okay, perfect. Um, so I will go ahead and share my screen again. And for those of you that had to hop on a couple of minutes um, late, um, I will reiterate that this was our first time in seeking a challenge grant match. Um, and so I'm just going to share very candidly what worked for us, but you know, I'm you know not necessarily like an expert or anything like that, but hopefully this will still be helpful. Um, I'm trying to figure out where to put my people. Okay, here, cool. Um, all right, so one second. Why is this? One second, I'm still trying to understand my computer. Hmm. Try, uh, your, uh, try your arrow keys. Yeah, I have, ah, thank you. <laughs> Once again, tech, I'm good at many things. Technology is not one of them. Um, okay, so thank you for your patience here. So welcome, let me just introduce you to my work at Level Ground Mixed Martial Arts. So I'm the founder and executive director and we use mixed martial arts, including boxing, kickboxing, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, even yoga to engage with youth within the communities of Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan um, to really empower them through these awesome sports that we offer, not just some of the transitive values that they can learn, such as discipline, such as perseverance, such as determination, but also to provide them with a really lovely community um, that they often call a second home to them. Um, and then in addition to athletics, we use that kind of as an offshoot to our off the map programmings, which include academic, um, academic 
tutoring and college preparation, as well as our student trainer workforce development program. And so our student trainer program is a um, workforce development program where our youth learn to become the managers of our gym as well as fitness professionals. And then we hire them here at our gym to teach classes, to work with clients um, as personal trainers. And so the heartbeat of our gym is to be youth run, youth managed, youth led. Um, and what's been really fun over the course of time, especially since we've moved into our current space um, in Upham's Corner, we have a 6,000 square foot gym um, that includes this mat space, which I'm sitting in now, as well as our academic area and another athletic area. What's really exciting is that we've been able to foster a social enterprise model where some of our, um, where we not just only serve youth now, but we also serve their families. So we have um, young adults, adults coming in to train, and then we provide um, athletics to them at a sliding scale according to what they can afford. Um, and that is really helpful because um, if you know, if you're aware of the cost of yoga or boxing classes or any of those type of niche um, fitness classes here in Boston, we're looking at between $150 to $200 a month in memberships. And so for our families, that's just not accessible to many of them. And so we're really excited to be able to provide these amazing athletic opportunities at a um, highly discounted rate of as low as $30 a month to our families. And so um, I'm gonna just show you just a one minute video that will give you an idea of our work. Um, I'm just trying to figure out once again, uh, here we go. Just let me know if you're not able to hear anything. Hey, my name is Andy, and I'm Reed. We're student trainers at Level Ground Mixed Martial Arts in Dorchester. We've been training and working here for the last year and a half. To me, Level Ground is a place where I can learn combat sports and encourage others to learn about them too. To me, Level Ground is like a home away from home. We're like a small family that continues to grow with each and every member that arrives from the community. We all work together to grow stronger as a team. Before I came to Level Ground, I was a very shy and shouldn't person. That's how I was for most of my life. When I started attending Level Ground, I started gravitating towards boxing. It later became my passion. Over time, the people at Level Ground slowly broke me out of my timid shell. My first combat sport was wrestling. I wasn't very good at it, but it paved the way to coming to Level Ground and learning various forms of mixed martial arts. Now I teach a boxing class once a week with Andy here. Please help us grow and reach more kids and adults in Boston. Join the tribe, 20K for 2020. So that video was from um, this past annual appeal, um, 2019 going into 2020. Um, and so I showed that just because it gives you an, a little bit of a, an idea about our work. But then also you're able to see just the general tone with which we fundraise. Um, we always kind of take the approach of inviting people in whether we're inviting them into our direct community as members, or if they're funders or if they're donors, we invite them into this larger community of level ground, of being able to support these amazing young people. And so that's really the tone that we try to use, um, whether it's we're doing a year end campaign, we're applying for a grant, or we're doing something like seeking our challenge grant match. So that provides a little bit of additional context. Um, Oops, let me go this way. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to, one second. Here, let me go here. Um, so I just wanted to provide just a few numbers in a nutshell here. So I'm not gonna talk about 2020 because um, while we still have active programs um, this year, we, you know, this year is just really, really strange. And we're just reopening our gym this week, actually. Um, however, last year we served over 600 youth and families. We employed 26 youth this year and last year. Um, and in 2019, our sources of revenue um, included in large part grants um, by foundations, 18% um, donations by individuals, 5.9% earned income, um, such as our gym memberships, and then nearly 5% of donations by groups such as churches, organized fundraisers on behalf of the organization, et cetera. Um, and so the Lenny Zakem Fund Challenge Grant um, 
and match. So that's just the $10,000. So the $5,000 that was the challenge grant as well as a $5,000 match um, represents just over 3% of this year's budget. And so, hey, Eric, I have a question or somebody. Um, yes. So I have like people's faces on Zoom. When I'm sharing my screen, do you see my view of Zoom? Uh, no, we see your. You see my power. No, not sure. We see your PowerPoint, and then we see kind of some of the browser tabs you have open, but not your view of Zoom. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, got it. I'm just trying to get myself situated. Okay. Okay. Cool. Just wanted to make sure. Um, so yep. to give you context about our um, challenge grant. So in February, much like many of you, we were a, awarded a grant by Lenny Zakem Fund. Um, this is the first year that we were um, provided with a challenge grant opportunity. So we were awarded a $10,000 grant with a $5,000 challenge grant matching opportunity. So we would have to raise $5,000 in order to receive the remaining $5,000. Um, so this was an this was interesting timing because we had just concluded our year end appeal, and so the thing that we're considering is like, okay, when are we going to start to leverage this opportunity? Because we didn't want to ask people too soon after we had just rolled, um, we had just concluded our year end campaign. So our thinking before COVID happened was to have a spring fundraiser, and during that time we would be seeking the match opportunity. However, um, COVID presented a very, very um, unique challenge as all of you guys know, and how do we figure out how to continue to serve youth and families during this ridiculous time? And through this challenge, there um, lay the opportunity to roll out a campaign to seek this challenge grant match um, sooner than we had anticipated. So in mid-March, we started to play with a soft launch of a campaign and then um, rolled that out for two and a half weeks. And then we're fortunate enough to meet our $5,000 requirement um, within two and a half weeks. So um, we were happy that we we're able to, you know, kind of get, get that going sooner rather than later because it directly fueled our ability to roll out um, our, our program in response to COVID-19. So we, we, um, we took a couple of different approaches in regards to strategy in seeking our challenge grant match. The first was to communicate a specific project with a very targeted need. And this is something that we would do once again, irrespective of whether COVID was a thing. Um, my approach generally when we do any sort of campaigning to donors is to identify a very specific um, need and to communicate that well. Um, and in this case, it was to launch what we call our virtual academy, which is where we started to migrate all of our programs that I told you about, our athletic programs, our college programs, our employment programs. We started to migrate those things online, calling it our virtual academy, and we were inviting folks to join with us and making sure that we were able to keep on serving youth and families during quarantine. So that was the first strategy. The second strategy was to secure a significant portion of the match before a public launch. And once again, this is something that I try to do irrespective of COVID-19 or challenge grant, just whenever I'm fundraising to individual donors, I have a target, I'm sure like all of you have a target amount in mind. And my strategy say, for example, my target amount, you know, at the end of this year is going to be $20,000. I'm going to do my best to secure about $5,000 or so, at least 25% of that um, kind of behind the scenes. So that by the time I roll out my public campaign, I will have already have a good portion of the money raised. And this just helps to establish legitimacy of the campaign. No one wants to donate to a campaign that might fail. And so for us, it's really important to um, make sure that our public messaging is paired with some form of um, observable progress already um, to signal that this is a campaign, campaign that is going to succeed. 
So I'm going to show you just my specific timeline. And once again, feel free to interrupt me at, um, at any time. Um, on March 16, when we were kind of, you know, the, the entire state was shutting down um, and we were trying to figure out what to do, we really started to land on like, okay, we're going to not just stop programs, we're going to continue programs in a remote sense because the worst thing that can happen is for us to not be able to serve our youth and families who really need this community and really need the supports that we have to offer them. And so um, once we really nailed down our concept of Level Ground Virtual Academy, then I started to reach out to different stakeholders and folks who have donated higher at higher levels um, over the last year or two, and just to let them know how we're going to approach um, quarantine and approach serving our young people during this time. My approach was instead of just asking straight up for money, was to ask for advice, was to ask, ask for feedback, for input. Um, and as a result, um, what someone contributed $3,000 just off the bat. And so that was obviously really helpful to get this campaign rolling um, very, very quickly. So my, strat my, my backup strategies, if that didn't work, was to recruit um, my board members to each pledge to raise $500. Um, I had five board members at the time, so that would, if that were successful, then we would have $2,500 or half the match already raised. And then we would, um, per, that, that would be preceded by grassroots fundraising. Um, and if that didn't really take much traction and the board wasn't like super excited to do that, then I was going to start incorporating um, some the the um, challenge grant match opportunity into our spring grants but lucky for us this first strategy worked, so we didn't have to go to our black backup plans okay so on um march 17 that's when we got that three thousand dollar larger donation um and so on march 18 a couple days later um i just started to put really like small feelers with a soft ask on social media. Um, my, you can see what I wrote in Instagram. I was really mainly addressing our um, gym community and letting them know like, hey, if you need to cancel your memberships during that time, by all means, cancel your memberships. But just to let you know, we are going to be launching our virtual academy. And if you do want to support the gym and have capacity to do that, perhaps consider um, keeping your membership. And if, and if you're not a current member, then just to let you know, we have this opportunity with Lenny Zakem Fund. And if this is something that appeals to you, then we would ask that you would consider donating. So it was a very, very, very soft ask um, that I put out there, but a couple of people saw and that resulted in like a bit over a hundred dollars being raised. So not super big, but just a little something to put out there. Um, and then the next day, that's when I started to put out there a bit more of a targeted ask to our donors and to our general um, interest um, listserv. And that was an invitation to help launch our virtual academy. So I have the copy of the newsletter here, and then I'll show you specifically this little video that I made, um, super, super low tech. Um, but what I think was successful and what was powerful was everyone was understandably really, really concerned and a bit freaked out at that time um, about what life was gonna look like for them, as well as what is it going to look like for people who, um, who might need a little bit more help and support within the community. Um, and so I think from that end, that's why this very low tech video was successful, but I will um, share it with you in a second. First, I'll just show you the basic language that I used in the, in the newsletter. So once again, I will, I introduce the concept of virtual academy. Um, and then at the bottom before asking super directly, I make people aware of the opportunity that we have with Lenny Zakem fund, um, have that beautiful give button down there, but really kind of leading with this video, um, which I will show um, most of it to you. It's three minutes long. Hey, this is Allie from Level Ground Mixed Martial Arts. 
I wanted to update you guys on how Level Ground is addressing the situation related to COVID-19. We 100% are doing our very best effort to continue to provide very structured and meaningful ways for our youth and families to engage in fitness and engage in community with one another. So with that, next week we are launching our virtual academy where we will be providing um, athletic classes starting at 6 p.m. live streamed Monday through Friday where youth and families can engage in yoga, martial arts-based um, fitness classes, calisthenics, et cetera, online, and get their bodies up and moving, be connected with one another. Um, this community is such an important part of the youth and families involved in our organization, and we're doing our best to create a little bit of structure, a little bit of normalcy in their lives. Um, additionally, we will have our workforce development programs and academic programs offered online to our youth employees where they will be engaging um, several hours a week um, so that they can continue learning and being connected as well as um, making a paycheck a lot of them have start have you know rely on having a source of income to support themselves and help support their families and we're doing our very best to make sure that that um, remains a constant in their lives. So with that, I wanted to make you aware, I wanted to invite you to work out with us um, starting next week. Additionally, we wanted to invite you to help us launch this virtual academy. We have been so fortunate because we've gotten a $5,000 challenge grant from the Lenny Zakin Fund. So that means that for any amount of donations that we receive up to $5,000, they will double it. So if you have capacity and it's of interest, um, if you were to donate 25 bucks, that would become 50, 50 would become 100. Um, folks can also set up recurring monthly donations it's always like five dollars a month um, just to support our youth um, employees to make sure that they are able to get the learning opportunities the academic opportunities that they've come to rely on that they're able to get their paychecks to support themselves and their families that we're able to keep on supporting our staff um, and take care of the needs um, of our academy over the next few months as um, all of us are impacted in very interesting ways here. However, um, no pressure whatsoever. Just wanted to put it out there um, if that's of interest and something that you feel passionate about. Um, we hope that you engage with us. Um, take advantage of our free athletic classes online. Um, stay connected with us. Know that you are in our thoughts and our prayers, and we so appreciate your support and partnership over the course of the years. Talk soon. Bye. Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me get back here. Um, so yeah, the general tone of all of our communication um, tends to be relational, tends to be warm. Um, and so that was, you know, I did my best to reflect that in terms of this initial communication as well. Once again, really inviting people in um, to join in our virtual academy as well as perhaps support it financially. Um, and then and that's, and um, once I sent that out, donations started to trickle in. Um, and so then later that evening, I provided an update on how much we had raised, including that $3,000. Um, and so once again, people start to see like, okay, they've raised over $3,000 out of $5,000. This campaign has legitimacy. Um, and then from there, we got um, about $700 raised that day. Um, and so I let four days pass, and then I sent out a newsletter again to donors and our general interest, um, letting them know that our virtual academy was starting that evening, that they're more than welcome to join. Um, and I do that obviously as like a service to them, but also if they happen to join and you know kind of wanted to see what all of this is about, they could really see what they were supporting. And we had a couple of people um, take advantage of that. And then at the bottom here, I let people know that we are getting closer to our match goal and only had um, a bit over $1,100 left to meet the $5,000 goal. Um, let's see. 
gosh, I'm having so many issues with this here. Move. Um, and then that same day, I sent out a second newsletter to our gym members. So the people who currently train here, both youth and adults, um, encouraging them to join the virtual academy, but also same type of messaging, thanking them for supporting the gym thus far and inviting them if it was of interest and if they had capacity to um, donate towards a match as well. And so between those two things, we were able to get $800 more raised that day. And then um, on April 2nd, um, smaller donations kept on trickling in over the next few days. Um, and then I talked to my board members and was like, you know, it'd be really great if we could just like wrap this up. Um, and so our board was kind enough to um, distribute the remainder, um, which was just about $300, a little over $300. And so with that, once again, we really relied on um, past donors, kind of like higher net worth donors who um, provided that additional, provided that initial $3,000. Um, then folks in between who provided some kind of grassroots support. And then um, for the final stretch, relying on our board. And so if I were to break down the donations for you, we, um, launched the campaign on March 16th, and it was active for 17 days. Largest donation was 3000 Smallest donation was $18, which I thought was just really adorable. Like it wasn't $15 and it wasn't $20, $18. Um, and then we had 17 total donors. Um, I do wanna note that we had some people donate during that time, but it wasn't very clear to us if they would have donated anyway, because they donate on a fairly frequent basis. We also had one donor um, contribute $2,000, but once again, I knew that they were gonna donate something before this happened. And it wasn't clear to me if that was in direct response to the challenge grant. And according to our challenge grant letter, it was pretty clear that um, we had to count funds that were specifically geared towards the Lenny Zakem challenge grant. So we did not include um, that 600 some odd dollars as well as this $2,000 donation in that. Um, excluding the $3,000 donation, donation, the average size um, was $125. We got seven new donors, which represented $650 worth of donations. And four of those folks had visited the, visited the gym before or were current gym members. And so that is kind of my experience. Um, I'm gonna stop my share for a second. So that was my experience um, with getting our challenge grant match. And I'm just wondering if there's any questions that I can answer um, in terms, clarifying questions in terms of the general strategy that we used or sequence of events or um, makeup of the match in any way. I just want to congratulate you on a wonderful campaign. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, thank you for sharing it because um, it, it's it was really great to see um, your strategy and um, good for you. <laughs> great. <laughs> thank you. I did want to mention too, just um, it, it sounded like you weren't sure about why someone gave an $18 donation, but actually it's very common mm. for Jewish people to give donations in increments of $18. Um, it's a, it's a, okay. Yeah, yeah it's a form of oh. giving chai, um, which is life. And so very often they will give donations um, multiples of 18. I love that. That yeah. makes so much sense because this person has donated before and it's always in very strange dollar increments. Yep. So, well, what I perceived as strange because I, exactly. I was not aware of this. Until you, know it, until you know that it's a tradition. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you for letting me know that. I always wondered what that, you know, why that was. <laughs> yep. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, yep. Are there any other things that I could clarify? around how we approach this. I just wanna, this is Melanie from HYCC. I just wanna Hi. second what Ellen said. Um, just very impressive. Um, so organized, really letting us know exactly what you did and why you did it, when you did it, how you did it. And just, you know, the, the dedication that you have for the organization is just coming through loud and clear. Um, this has been really clarifying, so thank you. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Um, so I see a couple of ways that we could use time if it's of interest. Um, so first is if anybody wants to throw out um, to the group in general, if they're having any issues with um, or any any thoughts that are coming to mind and how they might approach a challenge grant or Fatima, I was interested um, since you're going to be specifically working on yours, um, if it would be of interest and helpful to you to spend a few minutes in a breakout group with um, the rest of the participants um, to share some things that you're considering and maybe um, the group here could give you a little bit of feedback or ask questions. Would that be helpful to you? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't want to you know, take up a lot of space if that's not helpful for other folks, but it would be helpful for us for sure. Okay. I mean, I honestly think it might be really helpful um, for others um, just because I, I know that a couple of folks here said that they have pursued challenge grants in the past. So perhaps they could offer some you know, insight and advice and feedback. And then for others that have not yet um, gone through this process, it might be really helpful for them to hear kind of your thinking and what the kind of considerations that you have to make right now so that when they do receive a challenge grant opportunity, um, it will already be in their mind. Honestly, I wish I had been able to have kind of a bit more exposure before this happened because like it was my first time and I, I really didn't know um, what to do until we really kind of like flushed out a strategy and everything like that. Um, so what I think I would love to do is maybe take 15 minutes or so um, and I'll put you all in a breakout group. Um, and then for me personally, when I do workshops and then I'm kind of having a conversation, a great breakout group, sometimes it can be a little bit bothersome for me for the facilitator to just kind of like drop in and interrupt. So what I'll do is if there's a point where you want one of us to drop in, then you can just raise your hand. Zoom allows that capability. So you can just raise your hand and then I'll drop in. But other than that, I'll just have a little bit of time for you guys to sift through um, some of your ideas and some of your thoughts. And then perhaps um, after 15 or 20 minutes or whatever, um, then you guys can rejoin the group and then maybe just report back a little bit about how the discussion went. Um, so just really briefly, I have a couple of prompting questions, but please feel free to, um, dear Lord, please feel free to um, also discuss whatever comes to mind and whatever is helpful um, with the group. So my idea, my idea was to um, break you guys up um, where in this case, Fatima could share her central idea or um, challenges that she's considering in terms of pursuing a challenge grant match or just basic questions regarding strategy. And then other folks would respond with ideas and feedback and then Fatima could just report back on how the discussion went. Um, I would be really, really interested to hear. Um, so with that being said, perhaps I can um, ask Eric to break yep. you guys up into a group. And then if at any point you guys want to, for us to participate, or if you want to come back, you know, if you've had enough time, just let us know. All right. And I'm okay, sending cool. folks off to the breakout rooms now. Okay, great. Hi. All right, I think, yeah, I think everyone's here. Okay, cool. Um, hello, I hope that you had a nice conversation. Um, I'm just so interested to know, Fatima, how your discussion went. And if anyone else wants to chime in, um, feel more than welcome to, but I'll just pass it over to Fatima. Yeah, it was really good. Um, it was helpful to, um, hear from other folks like their their take on on what we're trying to do and also that everybody struggles with um engaging board members and fundraising mm -hmm. um but that's that's like a unique part of what we're what we're doing we're basically using this challenge grant to also do some board training around fundraising mm -hmm. a lot of our board members are totally new, like they have never been on a board before, haven't done fundraising, um, but they're excited to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, but we all, we also, like similar to you, ha had to change our plans 
because of COVID. Yeah. Um, so it's helpful, yeah, to talk through um, what we're thinking of and also incorporate some of your framing <laughs> into, into what, um, what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Do you see as, um, is you, are you considering when you're talking about engaging your board, do you think that you're going to try to ask them to commit to a certain dollar amount each or what, what's your thinking around that out of curiosity? So that's one thing we struggle with is how to, you know, set numeric goals for the board. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're doing is we're, we're doing a training with them next week. Um, well, it's like a mini training slash, like, we're actually going to have them go ahead and like send out emails to, um, um, during the, during the training. So we're going to have them identify people in their lives that they could make and ask of for this match. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, we struggle with setting goals a number goal for them because a lot of them are younger and also like can't necessarily make huge donations themselves, which I think sometimes boards, like if they can't do, you know, if they can't raise it from other people, they're able to just do it themselves. Um, yeah. So yeah, we don't know how quite how to set like realistic goals for them or how to encourage them to make like significant asks um of of people in their lives and I think I'm also always afraid to like yeah like set a like ask somebody for a specific number um I'm getting more confident in it but we're hoping that this activity will also boost their confidence <laughs> in doing that yeah. 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 No, I really appreciate that. And that, re um, what you guys talked about also resonates with me a lot. Um, not that I'm like any expert here, but I'm kind of thinking about it in a couple of ways, um, that you've mentioned. So with this particular campaign, um, my backup strategy was to do $500 each, um, in, in trying to get each of them to commit to that specific amount, just so that we would be able to like get that halfway mark. And my thinking around that was like, you know, that's simply like them asking five people to donate a hundred bucks, like a hundred bucks for, you know, most likely is pretty achievable for like five of their friends or 50 bucks for 10 of their friends, like something like very pal palatable and like, you know, really presenting it to them with that, um, in that way. However, in terms of our upcoming year end appeal, I'm not going to approach it that way um, because I also don't want them to be limited to $500. And I don't want them to be like, oh, like I got $500, like, no, oh, okay. Um, so what my board chair and I are going to um, be pushing um, the rest of the members to do is to really give some thought about what they think that they can commit to raising. Um, and my hunch is that most of them are going to be, it, it'll even out, um, where most of them will be able to raise between 500 and thousand dollars. Um, you know, if not a little bit more, um, but I'm kind of allowing them to make, to come to that conclusion for themselves so that they have more buy-in. Um, and so I think buy-in is really important, just kind of like what you're mentioning. Right. Um, cause I think that, um, when people, I, 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 you know, unsuccessfully like four years ago, try to make kind of an arbitrary amount, like, okay, each of you please raise a thousand, a thousand dollars. And for a couple of people, because at that time, especially we had a working board that was just a very intimidating amount. And it was not um, wise of me to kind of lead with that suggestion. Um, but hopefully once they give it some thought, then they can kind of come to that conclusion themselves. Like, you know, $500, maybe even a thousand dollars, maybe that's not so out of reach. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I'm kind of wondering, um, in terms of like filling the gap, are you thinking about um, doing any, like, are you thinking about doing like newsletters or um, some kind of targeted strategy for um, perhaps, you know, your individual donors that are already engaged or that might, might want to, you know, have be recurring donors, et cetera? Yeah, what we were thinking is, you know, our backup plan is just social media. Um, but actually, from this conversation and seeing the videos that you made, what I'm thinking should be our like, you know, sort of main uh, backup after the individual asks is Instagram. 
So we, um, our organization focuses on racial justice work and our whole thing is policing and surveillance, which is like, you know, the thing this year and this yeah. summer. So our Instagram just like totally exploded this summer around the work mm -hmm. that we're doing. Like we went from a few hundred followers to a few thousand. Wow. Um, wow. So I'm thinking, you know, and people engage in that content a lot. And yeah, I'm thinking like we could do some videos on there, you know, inviting folks who have been following our work and engaging, you know, digitally in that way to, to make their first donation. Because um, I think for us, you know, one of our big goals, our two big goals with this grant are, um, you know, getting a lot, getting new donors in, and then um, also like, yeah, boosting our board's confidence in their, in their fundraising skills. Um, so yeah, I think, I think Instagram will be <laughs> um, a, a fun thing to try. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, especially like, I, I mean, I can't believe that you've been able to get like that much traction. Um, well, I can, you know, um, there's a lot of, um, interest rightfully so in the type of work that you're doing and it's really 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 important and now more than ever people are finally seeing that and valuing that and it's not like you're like leveraging that for some like weird you know personal gain or whatever um <laughs> but the fact is that like thank god people are now paying attention um and that is um it's really unfortunate that it had to come to this point but at least people are paying attention um and you're doing really important work to work on really real things that people are finally looking at. Um, and I think that you should 100% um, really get your story out because not because you're like, oh, I wanna get your money, but because you're doing work that needs to be done. And now everybody knows about it. You know, I think it's a really, really um, interesting time for you to, um, yeah, like be, be really, really forward facing in terms of your ask right now because I think that people will be really really excited to um support you I get I don't know about you guys but like a lot of my a lot of people who aren't just like kind of like in this life that much I hear a lot of people being like what can I do what can I do what can I do and if you were able to leverage your Instagram and highlight some stories highlight some testi testimonies about like what are people's experiences here um in terms of the racial injustices that they face on a week to week, a day to day basis. Um, and then I, I think that you can just lead with the story and then the ask, because I think the story will speak so loudly that people are gonna be like, okay, now what can I do? How can I help, you know? Um, and so like for us, you know, what we're gonna do is our, our basic strategy for our year end campaign, um, you know, we've, got, we've gotten the match, but um, now for the year end campaign, we're gonna try to raise, you know, some money to go to 2021 and the general theme is going to be like help us fight forward help us fight forward help us fight forward and then um we're going to have our different students talk about um what the last few months has been like for them um whether they want to talk about what quarantine life has been for them whether they want to talk about what their experience of just like this general state of the world is like for them right now and then why this community is important to them um, and so the story is going to lead and then we really trust enough in the story because they're powerful and they're true that people are going to naturally want to support our young people, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I think that you have a lot to go on, um, and I'm really excited for you for sure. Thank you. So I hope that you have confidence that you you're doing important work and you have great stories to tell. Um, and I think that people are going to be really excited to support you, especially given this matching opportunity, mm -hmm. you know? especially that $50 is going to be a hundred, a hundred is going to be $200 to be able to say that so powerfully and palatably, I think it's going to make a huge impression. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 Um, are there any kind of like anything outstanding, like thoughts or questions that people want to pose to the group, um, before we start to wind down? Do people feel okay? Okay, cool. All right, awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for um, allowing the rest of the group to learn from you, Fatima, and good luck. And I'm sure that you guys are gonna kill it and continue to do awesome work um, with the help of this match. Um, so anyways, thank you so much guys for joining. I really appreciate it. 
Thank, thank you. you. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. Okay. okay.